Hello there. Welcome to season three. Season three, guys. Season three of the In All Honesty podcast. As usual, my fabulous name is Oliver Rowe, and I am more than excited to have you here. My goodness, as I had promised you, season three will be a lot more participatory for you because I also want to hear your experiences. So I'll give you a little recap of how this podcast began. I started this podcast as a labor of love, as a place to just share my stories and my experiences in life generally, because I felt like no one else in this world is living the same life as I am living. Am I not supposed to be on this planet? But what happened is that when I put this content out, a lot of people reached out to me and were just like, I relate or live. Your life is a replica of mine. And I'm just like, there's more of us. There's more of us. We have quorum. There's a community out there. So that keeps me going. Every single day is now a day to look forward to because I know I belong. I I, I, I belong to this world. I, the people going through the same experiences as me, right? And I am so happy. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for always being there and supporting. Thank you for sharing your opinion, your comments, your laughter, your love. I do not know what I will do with you. I'll probably make mandazis for you. But as for now, I can just say I am really, really grateful. And for our first episode of season three, hmm, guys, I decided to start with a ba ba black sheep. So the black sheep of the family. This is what this podcast is all about. This episode is all about. So what I was conflicted about is, is the black sheep of the family also the least favorite child of the family? Is it the same thing? But with that said, I'm also trying to figure it out and I will appreciate all your comments and all your questions about this particular topic. I had two people write to me. I've had comments here and there as well of people just commenting on the social media posts that I put up. But I've had two specific experiences that have been lettered down to me and I am super excited. I'll be sharing them with you in just a bit. Um, so with that said, Black Sheep and the least favorite child of the family this is not to say that um, there's some sort of mistreatment in every family or of some child in the family. It's just to say that there's people who we've realized we didn't live such a conventional lives, such conventional lives in our families' homes. And we are only realizing it now in hindsight. Looking back, we're just like, um, okay, maybe I am not liked that much. <laughs> But let's get to the letters and then we'll get to talk about it later. So with the letters, I'm hiding the identity of the people who sent in my letters because they categorically stated that they want the identity to be hidden. However, if you are writing to me and you'd like to be identified as you are, then just let me know. I am more than happy to do that as well. But for these two letters, let's get to them and then we'll discuss. So my first letter reads, this is from Matende Chere. I'm making up these names and honestly, I love Luya names. So <laughs> let's just go with it. <laughs> or Matende Chere is Kisi, is it? Anyway, I, I, I'm crazy with names. They're names that just make me happy. And so those are the ones I'll give them. Okay, so my first letter is from Matende Chere. And the letter reads, Ba Ba Black Sheep. I think I am the black sheep. Let's start with the most recent, which was last year. My grandma died in October. May her soul rest in peace. So we bury her on a Saturday. We are withholding dates. So see, we are planning for it and everyone gets a role. Isipokuwa, my family, my entire family, dad, mom, the kids, none of us get a role. It is well, no worries. As we plan, my cousin is tasked to do entertainment. I'm guessing this is like public address system, DJ, music, yeah. So Roho Safi, me, I know entertainment costs 700 bob. My cousin goes ahead and quotes, and quotes 1,000 bob. So the cousin is quoting 1,000 bob for entertainment and Matende Chere knows that uh, entertainment costs 700 bob. I know because my wife and I work in that industry and we have connections to even people who own equipment not middlemen, just basically we, we have the connections. Guess what they say? Let's support our own. I'm here thinking. We support someone doing biz, 
kwa matanga <laughs> especially with family question mark question mark question mark anyway they went ahead and said he's reliable and accountable so to me who is not those two things cheers hide my id cheers baby boo <laughs> Okay, so I'll give you the lowdown of this story for my audiences who are outside Kenya who do not comprehend Kiswahili. So Matendechere, um grandma died la- Matendechere's grandma died last year in October. We know how African funerals are, so they were here planning their whatever. Our 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 funerals are a bit extra for people who do not understand. So this is Kenya, I would guess. And during the funeral planning, usually different families or different family members are assigned roles. And what happens is that half fam- um, his family, his entire family does not get a role. So everyone else, cousins, uncles get roles for the funeral, but their family does not get any roles. Then there's one of his cousins who is tasked with getting the entertainment system. So he's the one um, who's supposed to get the music, I'm guessing the PA, the equipment for all that. And this cousin goes ahead and quotes a thousand Kenyan shillings. And we know that, and Matendichere knows that whatever this cousin is quoting for goes for 700 bob or less. So basically he's trying to um, steal from the family. And when when they sort of brought it up and uh, Matendichere asked, I know a couple of people because my wife and I work in that industry and we know the people who own the equipment. You don't even have to deal with middlemen. We know the people who own the equipment so we can get it to you cheaper, maybe even cheaper than 700, Bob. And they're told they should not interfere with this particular docket that has been assigned to their cousin because apparently their cousin is very reliable and accountable so then matendichere holds back and says you do you what he doesn't understand is that this family is willing to have at this point they don't even care for cost you'd rather just use someone who you like better than save up on money for a funeral so yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'll give you a few developments later on, but let's move to our second letter. Our second letter is from Sifrosa. <laughs> Aki, just forgive me with the names. I'm having a lot of fun with the names here. So Sifrosa says, hey, Sasa, in my family, I'm the last born. Wengine wa meniacha na almost 5, 10 years. Now, mimi story yangu iko hapa. Being the last born, obviously you expect to be treated differently from the others. Now, Kwetu, it's different. As the last born, Mimi, I behave like the first born. Duties, kila mahali, ni Mimi, everything. Makiu, my elders were mekatu. Sasa kitu ilini kasirisha, during COVID, we started a uh, kabiashara na my bro. As expected, we had some arguments. Sasa, akamua apeleke hiyo kesi kwa my dad. Imagine dada kaniambia ni mwachie yo biashara nianze upya cuz yeye ndio mkubwa <laughs> This what I this what I felt triggered we Niache yo biashara nianze upya cuz yeye ndio mkubwa I am struggling banange eh paka she uses a Uganda phrase I am struggling banange starting a fresh bana Nikikumbuka the idea of the business ilikuwa yangu na venye nilingangana ndio inuke na ishiwa na nguvu. Biashara yenyewe iko na profit ya close to a million bob a month. I don't know if you mean revenue, if you mean profit. Chai. Okay, so the pro- um uh, biashara yenyewe iko na profit ya close to a million bob per month. We Sasa issue yangu kubwa ha- so, sasa I- okay i'm sorry so he says where and then he says sasa uh, per month is per month okay so he says where sasa issue yangu kubwa hawa ndio watu waze but they behave as if wao ndio watoto hiki tu imeni bore to hide id simfrosa simfrosa and if- Simfrosa, me, I'm triggered. So the lowdown of this second story, Simfrosa's story. 
So Simfrosa is the last born in a family of I don't know how many. And apparently she's always the one taking up a lot of responsibility. Unlike people would think last borns would do. So from what I'm getting, all her siblings are way older than her. And they're older by probably five to ten years. That's a gap. But from what she's saying is that she's the one responsible for most of the things. She's the one who needs to run errands here and there. She's basically the one who's trusted to do everything. She's oh, If something goes haywire, it's her who's supposed to come and sort it. But she's the last one. She has way older people that she calls siblings. Now, what is triggering her so much at this point is that she started over COVID. She started, she came up with an idea and started a business with her brother, an elder brother, I assume, because if she's the last one and everyone else is older, then she started the business with her brother. So she worked day and night to make sure that this business was a success. And as she claims now, um, the business is making close to a million bob profit every single month. I don't know what business this is, but please call me up if you have business for me. So she's making profit close to a hundred, uh, it's not a hundred million, sorry, close to a million bob a month. And now the problem is they had a little conflict. And so the brother said, this conflict, let's take it to our dad so that our dad can solve it. But when they took it to the dad, the dad tells him, Frosa, leave, just leave this business alone let your brother take it because you're the younger one you can start afresh guys tree good i am tree good but anyway that is simfrost's story so let us get to some of the things that i picked off these two letters and i have just comments to say about it before we get to my very own story so as I probably had mentioned earlier, I am not sure what the black sheep and the least favorite child means. I don't know whether it's the same thing. Could you be a black sheep and still not be the least favorite? Or could you be the least favorite and not necessarily be the black sheep of the family? So I would like to know if anyone else has answers. Just let me know. But first, let's start on comments. So Matende Cherry's letter. Hmm. Matende Cherry's letter is... I picked up a lot of things from that and I'm just like, whoo, thank you for sending in this because there are things I hadn't thought about when I was prepping for the episode and this just put a lot of light to it. So for Matende Cherry, the grandma had died and the family was sidelined and there's a cousin of them who's probably just, who's not probably, but definitely made money off the family during that tragic moment because they just could not trust Matende Cherry who knows that business in and out. But anyway, what I learned and picked from this, number one was that families as a whole can be black sheep. So them being sidelined by their family, the entire family, to not get any role in their grandma's funeral, it just goes to show, could it be that if, because I've never thought of it like that because I, as the black sheep of my family, I don't have a family. I don't plan to have a family. So I'm thinking, what if there are people who are black sheep in their family and then they went ahead to have a family? Does that mean by extension, their entire family is sidelined by the extended family just because the, the one link to that family was a black sheep? I don't know. That one just came to me and it hit me and I was just like, Ooh, there's so many levels to it when it comes to this least favorite black child uh, shenanigans. Number two is black sheep have the worst rep. And I will get to my story later on. But we have, I don't know, I don't know who comes up with the reputation that they assign to us, but where? That person needs a job in high state government because I'm 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 telling you where. <laughs> anyway, so what I learned from this is people would rather lose money than trust a black sheep. Like Matendichere has connections to this particular whatever. Matendichere has connections enough to get them a cheap a cheap entertainment person or a cheap entertainment package, but 
Nah, we just don't want anything to do with you. First of all, we think you will steal. So the job is actually assigned to someone who is genuinely stealing just so it doesn't go to Matendichere, who's thought of not accountable, not reliable. So, <sighs> guys, I am feeling triggered. I don't know why I started with this episode. But anyway, something else that I learned is that Black sheep, even just connecting to the former point, is that black sheep have, is it, could I say multiple personalities or they're just not known as the same person for different people? I say this because the family of someone could know someone very differently from how your friends and your workmates know you. I swear, even in my experience, if my family was to meet my workmates, they'd be speaking about two completely different people. They, My family does not know me like that. And what I was thinking from this case of Matendechere, the family thinks of Matendechere as very unreliable, as someone who we can't trust, someone who's not accountable. When in real sense, Matendechere is, is working in an industry, plus with a wife, where they know things inside out. So it's like me not being trusted to take up, say, a digital marketing job for a family company, but it will be assigned to someone who is just liked more, but probably they do not have the know-how. And just from the reputation that my family has gotten from from person to person around the family, I honestly just won't be considered for it. So... I tend to think black sheep also have either multiple personalities or people just know them differently. But I wouldn't say multiple personalities because I think the the personality that your family knows as a black sheep is a personality that they've assigned to you. Because most of the time they interact with you, you're either on defense mode or they are on attack. So the version of you they're interacting with isn't the version of you that's just the default version that you wake up to every morning when in real sense the people you work with or the people who are your friends interact with you in your genuine most in your most genuine self so your family just has this idea of how you are not that person and your friends and workmates interact with the real you and usually friends and family the friends and and workmates have a better picture of who you are than your family. But anyway, we move regardless. And uh, there's things like you finally get very comfortable in your reputation. Because um, as I was I was as I was reading through Matende Cherry's letter, I realized at the at the end he says, To me who's not who's not um, reliable and accountable, she is. Like, I'll just sit back and watch all this unfold. And uh, when I was chatting with Matendechere and he gave me a reply, um, I got to pick that the grandma was, was sort of the glue for the family. So uh, the grandma dying, it's sad for Matendechere. He really is broken. But at the end of the day, at the back of his mind, he's thinking, if the glue is gone, because most of the time they did most of these things for their grandma, they'd go to family reunions, they'd try and do this. They'd, even when you're not being treated well, you'd pick it up for the person who you love most. And so with this grandma not being there, as much as his heart and he really loves the grandma, at the end of the day, he feels a, a sense of relief in the sense that does this mean that my family can now separate itself from this toxicity that is whatever this family is so that we can finally just enjoy time by ourselves as a family, as a nuclear family, as a small family. And I can finally not deal with the bad reputation going around with extended relatives. And so I totally get it. Um, If you feel some sense of relief, I would not judge you for a minute. Higher, let's get to Sifros's letter. So uh, Sifrosa had the story where, oh, guy, why is, so, okay, so let's get to Sifrosa's letter. So from Sifrosa's letter, I think this is very important. People need to always, always remember this, that 
To be a black sheep, you're not necessarily the firstborn. To be the least favorite child, you're not necessarily the last one. And I've fought a lot of people for this because a lot of people tell me, but you describe your experiences as if you're a firstborn. And I'm just like, I have had so many responsibilities in my life. I could literally be a firstborn, but I am not a firstborn. A lot of people assume I am a firstborn. I am not. <laughs> I have siblings who are older than me, but I took up so much responsibility and I do not know why. I do not know how these responsibilities are cast upon one child who's not even on either ends. But at the end of the day, it happens. And in the case of Sifrosa, she's the last born. And she's the one who's taking up the responsibility. And I can imagine how heavy it is for her having to take care of people who are way older than you. I have experienced it. And I will tell you to date, I fucking hate it. I hate it so much. When I am taking care of someone who's a little younger, I usually feel, Ugh, that's fine. When I'm assigned something that belonged to someone that was a little younger, I'm just like, okay, maybe they, they haven't gotten the know-how. But for someone who's older, and then most of the time, this person is way older than you. I'm just like, guys, I'm triggered. I am so triggered. So I can understand where Sifrosa is coming from. And black sheep are not necessarily firstborns. You can be a lastborn. And the other thing is that um, from what you can see, Sifrosa is a mejituma. She's always out there ready to work her ass off to get things done. And when things need to be done, she will be there. But when when people need to get rewarded for these things that have been done, she is not counted. And let me tell you, that shit triggers you. You would die if someone ever did that to you. Because it feels like when people, it, you feel like you're being used throughout when people need you, you they come to you because you are the person who knows how to do, who will do, who has the, the zeal. But when it's time for the reward, no, because she's built an entire, I could call it a multi-million business. Because if you're, if you're closing up on profits close to one million, baby girl, baby girl, this is all revenue. So revenue could be the a million we are talking about, right? So I'm thinking if uh, profits are close to one million, that means your blood, sweat, and tears went into this, and they saw you work. These people who you are younger than saw you work, and your parents saw you work. But when you come before them and tell them, now there's this conflict, and me have worked, I've put everything I have in this business. Their solution is as simple as you're the younger one, you have time. Just leave it to your brother. I don't know me. I would throw hands. I do, I do not know, but we are going to quote. Because I, I, I am trying to understand and the understanding is not finding me. I, I don't know. I can only send out lots of love and hugs to you. But I've, I just feel like right now I could fight people for you. And I feel like right now I could get you lawyers and we just go to court because what in the nonsense? And I'm thinking because you're also young and you probably might have done it with your brother. And you thought, I, I don't know, somehow you hold out hope that these people you love will find reasoning. Sometimes you didn't have the contracts in place. You didn't have anything that states that you're a part, that you have partnership, anything that states you have stake in whatever company. So maybe... This is so difficult. Like doing anything with family for me, it's usually a bit. I'm a bit hands off on things that involve business and people I know. I don't even run. I don't even run businesses with my friends. Like you are everything to me. You can give me insight, da da da. But I do not have the heart to do a partnership with family or friends. And yo, Simforsa, me, I'm just sending you love. I'm sending you a lot of love and I hope you get through it. But um, hey, guys, it's tough. Okay, so those are my two letters and those are my thoughts on those two letters. If you have anything else that you can tell Simforsa and Matende Cherry, please leave it in the comment section or you can email me on Ola... Uh -huh. Olave Orao. <laughs> That's how you spell my name. Olive Orao at gmail.com 
Or you can also DM me on any of my socials at Olive or Rao. It's basically standard everywhere. Now let's get to my experiences as a child and what got me to where I am right now and why I think I'm the black sheep. Because a lot of times if you're the black sheep um, or I don't know about the least favorite. Honestly, me, I think I'm the least favorite as well because I... But I mean, I see people being done for things in my family. I'm just like, eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's go with the black sheep. So black sheep in the sense that your life is not very conventional. But what I realize now is that your path is set out from when you're a child to be a black sheep. You don't choose this. You'll only get to see it later in hindsight. But going back to as young as I could be, I'm just like, I don't remember a time when I was, I I can say I felt, I felt favored with, in the eyes of someone else, you know, like, ah. anyway, so first things first, as a child, what was weird and why I think I was the least favorite is because there's the aspect of being the best, but never being good enough. And I swear, I swear by everything I believe in. I was disciplined. I was respectful. I was clean. I was, I was basically, in fact, looking back now, I'm basically an extension of my mother. Everything she ever wanted a golden child to be, I was. But somehow... If I look back, I still was working so much for her validation. Like, I am most respectful, but there's disappointment. Somehow I've disappointed my parents or my sisters in a certain way. And it was constant working, constant. It, man, it's it's a lot. It was constantly working for this validation and it just never came. And I worked for it all the way to my adulthood until I remember when I was, was it 27? 27, there's, there's something that happened when I was exactly 27, when it just snapped. And I was like, guy, we imagine I'm not working for validation ever again. Because as, as a child, when you're working to just please people, you 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 going to people pleasing you you're now the biggest people pleaser of all time right and let me tell you i'm a law abiding citizen i there is nothing i do wrong i'm kind to people i love people i'm i am out here and i am a decent human being but somehow it's never never enough even when you cut your own limb so that someone else might walk it was never enough and I'm glad I just learned that. The other thing was as a child um, and growing up was taking the blame for other people and not taking the blame for myself. Um, it was very easy for my mom to hold me accountable for things my siblings did. And I'm just like looking back now, I think what I'm, I'm growing up, I remember having a lot of resentment towards my immediate younger sister because we are two years apart but a lot of responsibility was put on me for a, a lot of her responsibility was put on me she was supposed to be safe she was supposed to be clean I had to check where she was da, 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 da. and it is only in my adulthood that I look back and I realize why did my parents expect me to know better when I was only two years older than her I literally have friends right now we work with people who are the same age as my sister. How come I grew up my entire life knowing that she was my responsibility when in real sense, we were technically the same age. So the taking of, the taking of blame for so many things, it became such a norm that I got used to it. I remember there's, there's this time my sister, um, my, my immediate younger sister, and you know, kids pick it up. Imagine I can't blame her. And right now we've patched things up and she's my favorite sister in the whole world. Of course, there's, okay, my sisters are my favorite. But anyway, I love her and we have such a good relationship right now. But growing up, even kids can pick up. That's when I realized kids can also pick up that one is being favored over the other. 
because I remember there's this time my sister and I, um, I don't know, we had an argument over something, but um, just, out, I don't know, out of vile or something, she went and took my dad's documents and she tore them apart in my face. And she was like, she was tearing them and she was saying, I will tell mommy it's you. I will tell mommy it's you. And I remember in that moment just looking at her and I didn't I didn't run towards her to beat her or to stop her. I remember just backtracking. And in that moment it hit me that she lit my mom will come home and I will be beaten for this. I will genuinely I knew it in my heart of hearts. And, <laughs> and not even to miss a heartbeat. My mom came home that evening and my sister said, Olive has torn daddy's documents. And man, was I beaten. Boy, was I beaten. And I, it became so normal for me that I would freak out whenever my sister would scream. Any of my, sister, my, any of my younger sisters, if they screamed or if something hurt them, I'd freak out. Because it was my responsibility. And I remember some of the times, and I remember it became, it came to a point where I thought my defense would be, um, uh, I, uh, I, I didn't see her do it. Maybe my sister has broken something and then my mom will ask, um, who has broken this? And I'll say, ah, it's Nani or it's Nani. And my mom started asking, where were you when she was doing it? And in that moment, I realized I don't have a defense as well. So... I just need to be on the lookout that my sisters don't do anything wrong because then that blame is going to fall on me and I'm the one taking the fall for it. I'm either getting beaten or I'm getting scolded or I'm getting quarreled at for that particular thing. And not to say that my sisters weren't beaten for things. They are, they are, sometimes they were beaten. And let me tell you, me, I used to, I used to celebrate. In those makosas where they are beaten, ah, me, I used to be so happy. I was just like, I know it doesn't fix that next time it will be me being beaten for their mistake, but at least this once, at our skiv in the kiboko feel, at our feel how getting quarreled or getting scolded feels like. So, yeah, for me, I just, re <clears throat> sorry. For me, I remember such instances, and I'm just like, I took the blame for so many people. And why I resonated with Sifrosa's story is because even for me, I took blame even for my elder siblings. And sometimes even cousins who are older than us. So something would be done. But since, I don't know, my mom really believed that I am very responsible. I am very, I'm, I have all these good qualities. So by extension, I was expected to be at everyone's. I, I needed to keep everything in control, even as a child. So I think that to date, I still have some resentment for a lot of taking up the and I think it shows at work. Sometimes at a, I have to I have to cover or I have to do something so that someone else doesn't get in trouble. And that person is of a senior position than me just because of pure carelessness. Sometimes I just feel like throwing hands. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like throwing hands. But um you learn to live with it. You learn to live with it and the blaming. It doesn't end, guys. It really does not end because way into adulthood, I would get calls from even like uncles and aunties and they'd just be like, you see what your nanny has done? See what her nanny has done? Why don't you talk to them? And I was like, we're all grown-ups. And sometimes I'm being called about someone who's older than me. And I'm just like, who made me messiah? Who made me responsible of other human beings? And me, I was just born. I found myself here. I didn't. Yeah. So taking the blame for a lot of things. And let me tell you, as a child, I had internalized it so much. I knew. I knew something is going to happen. And I think that's where even the overthinking to date comes from and the anxiety. In my head, I'd have to process. And I, I'm not processing defense. I'm just processing mental preparation for the punishment I'm going to get for this thing that someone else has done. Do you see how psychotic this shit is? Do you see how uh, troublesome <laughs> this thing I'm talking about is? But yeah, growing up, I remember such instances. 
The other thing was a myriad of responsibilities. So just like Sifrosa again, you were responsible for everything. And I remember there's this one time you were traveling with a cousin of mine. Okay, so it was the girl who's married to my cousin. And so she came over and then we were supposed to live together. And my mom had sent me, so my mom had sent me money because she wasn't there. So my mom has sent money and either, no, she hadn't sent money. She left me with money because I don't think it was those Mpesa times. I don't think I had a phone. So my mom had left money and responsibilities and she had left what needs to be done and all that. And um, I remember now telling when they got there, I was like, we're supposed to pick this and this from the shop and then pick, go pick this and this. He, um, uh, this is the money for whatever and whatever we're supposed to fuel this much. So then my my cousin, I just call her my cousin. I really like her, by the way. So then my cousin asks, how come Olive is the one who's been left with instructions and money when the two of you are older? So my bra, my, my bro and sis were, were there. And I don't know. I don't remember what my sister's answer was, but her, she's just, she's vibes by the her, she's, ah, her, she's always vibes. She doesn't have time. She do, she's not even here to explain why it's not her who has the responsibility and not, <laughs> and me, it is me. So um, we just move on. And in that moment is when I also realize. Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, why was why weren't the instructions given to my two elder siblings? See, they exist. Anyway, but it my mom keeps saying, Oh, you are very responsible, you're very organized, you're very, you know, you have all these qualities. So I think for a very long time that kept my engine going. And let me tell you one thing. Even when you're going through these things as a black sheep, there's one thing they keep telling you. You see. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long on earth. So me, I was blackmailed for a very long time being told that I'll be the one who will live the longest among my siblings because I'm the most respectful, the responsible one, the one who's handling the shit. Gosh, I should have known earlier. But anyway, so there was that sort of guilt stripping for, ah, you're the blessed one. Ah, you're the, so that's your reward. People are getting actual physical rewards like, like a good treatment, like going out, being bought things. You, your reward, you're being told you live longer. What? In this world where you're not being given anything. Right now I look back and I'm just like, <laughs> religion, religion will be another episode. And the other thing was false accusations. As a, I don't know if my sisters, because I've been talking to my sisters lately and even them, they're just utterly surprised. They're just like, that happened to you. And even me, I'm surprised that some of the experiences they talk about because we literally grew up in the same house, but it's like, Mm -hmm. so some of the experiences you have within the same household are very foreign to you and you're just like wow and I remember telling my sister I remember the time you were leaving the house you were going to a friend's party and a mommy mommy gave you money mommy was like hey do you even have some money to walk around with you just don't walk like that and then she went into her purse and gave you money I told my sister I have never been so dumbfounded in my entire life I do not in that moment, I just, I was just like, what? Because let me tell you, I remember one incident. I have been to one birthday my entire life. A classmate's birthday. Her name was Rachel. <laughs> I went to that birthday and I remember I did everything that day because I know, you know, let me tell you, being a traumatized child, the things you do, you look back now and you're just like, so that day I had done everything. I had cleaned whatever needed to be cleaned. I had everything. You know, you you make sure that nothing will be held against you if you were to leave to go to that birthday. And the birthday thing started at two and I came back home at four. So I remember I, I didn't even come back home. It's my sister and I think the house help at the time who came to, so Eldoret is a really small town and we all knew if I was going to the birthday, if I'm going to Rachel's birthday, Rachel lives in this house here. So I remember that time it was my sister and uh, that house help who came and they were like, hey, mommy is waiting for you at home. Me, I knew it was war. I knew it was war. So I got home, I wore multiple, <laughs> I wore multiple stockings and shorts inside my dress just so if I get whooped, I uh, at least uh, let's manage the pain, okay? So um, I, my mom waits. I, I go. I find my mom is waiting for me in her bedroom. 
let me tell you me i was whooped and then she found that I had one shot inside she was like toa toa i was whooped it is my first and my last birth event to att- to attend me i i've never been never again have i found myself leaving the house to go to someone's birthday ever <laughs> where where so it is it is such incidences that you think and you're just like and then i'm sitting here and seeing ati mami i'm going to a party no it's not a, you've not said it's a birthday you've not said no my friend has a party and you're being given money me that day i didn't even ask for money me i walked to my friend's house that birthday and i was just like okay maybe this so the first time this um i remember that incident my first process was like eh these last bones are living well because you know how of course last bones get a very last bones get your parents while well. they are now cool i don't know how and then you guys have to deal with the parent who's doing who's dealing with trauma and all that but so me at first i assumed last bones are just treated better cuz your parents are a bit more easy as they grow older but then looking back i'm just like um I never saw such harsh treatment towards my sister who is literally an extrovert. My sister was ne- my elder sister is never was never in the house. She was at a church concert, she was at a church getaway, she was at a what? She was always so busy. And I'm thinking, was it because my event was not a church related thing? I don't know to date. I honestly do not have the answers to these questions. All I know is that those particular events traumatized me for life. And I didn't see the same energy extended towards my siblings. Probably, if all of us went through the same thing, I wouldn't be so mad. But wh- once being singled out was a lot. So false accusations was in the sense of, um, can we just sit for a minute and think about um, how black sheep? Okay, for girls, I don't know about boys. How black sheep started being called loose and whores from a very young age like your your breast just started showing your hips started growing and all of a sudden there was just a whole load of it's you and men you're doing something to men and it was really weird this uh, i call them false accusations because of all the people i have now interacted with and talked to who've gone through the same experiences they are the same as me. First of all, sexually they were late bloomers. We all got to have sex in our 20s after high school completely. Um any sort of like dating or all that. We are by the way, most of us are completely dysfunctional in relationships. We do we are not even here to pretend. Black uh, black sheep are struggling in relationships. So I'm just like how are you constantly accused of something you're not even good at? So there's always false accusations. And when I'm speaking about false accusations, there's even things like um, the things like your bad reputation. You know, your bad reputation is not something you ever did. It was just something that someone interpreted as to have offended them. So if, um, I don't know, if, I, if you came, there's, there's an incident where um, someone came home and said I should go help them with something. So they were a relative. I should go help them um, fix something else in the they, they were hosting or something. And I was like, I've not finished mopping the house. Can I finish mopping? And then I'll come once I finish. But I don't know how they took that. They left having felt that I have refused to go help them with their guests. So then that bad rep just goes around. It's just like, Oliver is a Poseidian now again. Oliver is a Poseidian now again. When in real sense, I didn't, I, I just needed to finish another task so that I can attend to that next one. So even the bad reputation that you have, you black sheep have, isn't something you did. It's just, repute, it's just I don't know, rumors passed around by other people. And am I making sense? <sighs> Anyway, guys, if you relate, you relate. Anyway, let's get to the process of healing. The healing does not end. I do I think I think you just learn to live with it. You learn to manage the triggers. But I don't um I, okay, let me not say healing healing happens, but because I'm 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 one person who really believes in therapy, but I haven't started therapy yet. 
it's in the works. I will go to therapy definitely and I will share my experiences with you. But at the moment, I haven't gone to therapy, but I've done a lot of work towards growing my mental health and stabilizing it very well. And one of the things that helped with the healing process for me, since um, my home, my family's home, my, my mother's house, my father's house, or you don't hear me speak of my father a lot. So I am, or maybe was, I'm not sure, but I was my father's favorite child. I really was. So when someone comes here, so if, if someone will come to my comments, even someone who knows me, it will be like, how are you saying you're the least favorite child when you're your father's apple of the eye? Eh? But um, now as a grown up looking back, I realized even if I was my father's favorite child, it's not my father who I stayed with at home. Yes, my father was there, very available, lovely parent. Mm -mm. Best of all. But my dad was out there working so that we had food to eat, so that we had. So as much as my dad was, I was my dad's favorite, he wasn't there for me to eat the fruits of favoritism. I had to deal with my mom, who clearly had a favorite. We know it's my, my immediate younger sister who's her favorite. She refuses, but oops, I mean, it's easier. It, well, she was... I. As an adult now, I'm struggling to see the favoritism. I feel like our parents are now just treating us equal. But when we were young, we could clearly see who was who was the favorite child to what parent. So growing up, yes, it was my youngest, uh, my immediate younger sister. But now I don't know. I feel like the dynamics for our family has really changed. And I feel like our parents now just treat us a lot more equally. I don't see favoritism in our adulthood right now. But anyway... Um, with that said, in the process of healing, the first thing that was the biggest, big, biggest gift I gave to myself was moving out of home. And a lot of people say, if you go back home, you save money, da, 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 like home gives you a comfort. For some of us, home does not hold peace like that. We are out here. We'd rather buy that peace and the price of peace is rent and we're willing to pay it. So... Home has a lot of moving parts and me just moving out. And I remember when I was telling you about the story of moving out of my house, of my mom's house, I was, I moved to a house where I slept on a certain, there's a duvet I've shared on my TikTok. I slept on a duvet. So I would put the duvet on the floor and then I'd sleep on it and then cover myself with half the duvet. So I'd, it would like, I would like roll myself on the duvet. And even... Sleeping in that, I, I didn't really care. I was the happiest I have ever been in my life. I didn't really care. I was the happiest. I was just so happy. It didn't matter that I'd, I was coming back home to a house that has no food, has no furniture, nothing. At the end of the day, I was just like, for once, I don't have to think about who's eating what, who's where doing what that I will now be answerable to the next day, you know. So for me, peace has always been. And that's why affording rent and just having a place of my own is so is such a high priority. Because for me, renting a house is not just renting a shelter. For me, renting a house is renting peace. I'm 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 buying my peace. And it's okay if I have to buy it. It's something you shouldn't be buying, but it's okay if I have to buy it. And this home like any home I've ever lived in. And a lot of people tell me, you always make every house you've gone into, even when people didn't see the potential for the house to be a good place, I would always make it a home. My houses have always been a place that you come to and find warmth and welcoming because it it does not matter what it is. It could be a square foot and I will just live in it. It's okay. It's fine. So long as it's mine and I am not responsible for anyone else so moving out of home was a very big part of healing for me um number two is choosing yourself and choosing yourself um choosing myself became was a journey that i went i started very recently and it took a lot of what my third point was which was eliminating guilt so 
you'll realize that a lot of times even the guilt you're feeling is because you are so used to serving people so much but when when you couldn't serve them like let's say the incident of i was mopping so i couldn't go and help with the guests this person assumes this person is so used to you dropping everything and going to attend to them that on the day when your hands are full and you can't drop these things or rather you're carrying glass and I can't drop these and come and attend to you on that day when you just excuse yourself automatically that day you're considered the worst person ever right and so for guilt and choosing myself it was kind of the same thing you telling yourself I I can't I can't take the last 200 shillings I have just to send money home. I need to eat. So on that day, you've bought your 200 shillings worth of supper. You're eating it, but you're eating it with so much guilt. But you know, at the end, of, sometimes you even try to rationalize what you've done. You're just like, even if I sent them 200, 200 can't feed the whole family. So I'd rather at least it's feeding me at least someone today is eating so you'd have to rationalize some of the things you'd do for yourself and um some of the things i just there's there's things i'm still realizing there, there's times you have triggers this time you have light bulb moments up until now where you just realize eh wait a minute uh by the way <laughs> and for me i would say even going through this experience one thing that I will tell you about black sheep and probably if you feel like you're not the child who's liked the most in your family, one thing is that you're the most convenient. So I would say in my experience, since I grew up in a in a in a space of I was always ready for defense or flight or fight. You know, you are always my my reflexes became being self-sufficient, being being everything you'd want you know if you needed security you'd have to be your own security if you needed if you needed something food you had to go find food for yourself so in that sense where you're always on the defense or where you're always waiting like you're you're, you're on vigil all the time in that sense you develop I, I don't know whether to call them qualities you develop certain qualities that allow you to be a very convenient independent person like I've always said even that has really affected my dating because I usually feel like a lot of the times men come into my life and then get into a space of a lot of comfort I'm just like mm. and that's where I pull out because I'm feeling like you I, I start taking care of you again I want someone who comes in and is very brazen about also taking care of me i don't want to be in a state where i start feeling like i'm slipping into a space where i start being responsible for you and that's a lot for me so that's why you're the most convenient because you had to you had to develop qualities that would help you survive but in real sense these are the qualities that the world needs People want someone who's organized. People want someone who's timely. People want someone who's... It's built on your traumas, but at the end of the day, you're the most industrious. You're the most um, valuable person in the room due to these qualities that were built up when you needed to survive. So in that sense, you're the most convenient. And that is why to date, um, you'll find... For me, I've fought those. Those those calls for at ECG, hello, can you talk to your cousin? Sidri, he's done what... We've seen your, your cousin drinking alcohol. Can you call him? Uh, as who? Did I give birth? Ebu? Okay, go deal with your children. So it has it has gotten to a point where I am very confident about, I'm not responsible for you people. But that has taken a lot of work. It's taken years over. And by healing, healing does not happen in a day, in a month, in a year. It depends. It depends on you. It could take years. It could take months. It could take weeks. I do not know. But you have to be very deliberate about leaving all your traumas behind. So that was on the on the point of convenience. Now, what you will realize is that you are the most convenient. You're the one people want to use the most. Me, I refuse to even run errands in Nairobi. At you're calling me, CG, from where? 
at the end, go to his city and pick carpets for me. You organize for someone. There's people who run errands in Nairobi. Pay them. Let them send the carpet to you in whatever town you're in. I don't do that anymore because I became the most convenient. You are the most industrious. You're the, the values you picked and the qualities you learned while trying to survive are very convenient for everyone in the world. The workplace, your family, your friends. So be very careful about being a black sheep or someone who survived um, traumas of favoritism amongst other people. Be, be very careful with the people you have around you. You'll realize there are people who are only looking to take and not so much give. And in the sense of, and in that very same point, you're very convenient, but you're very difficult to reward. You're very convenient. I, I kept on telling, there's this time, um, I think I've mentioned it in an episode before, there's this time my dad was in town and so I was, I shugulikiad him, uh, put him on a cab, took him back to wherever he needed to go. And then when, I think he called me like three days later and my dad told me, um, Kwani Wezi, you can't even say if you've received the money. You know me, I'm old, I don't know if my eyes see well, if maybe I sent the money to a wrong number. I'm like, what money? And he's like, you've not checked your impressor. I'm like, daddy, I don't even use my Safaricom number like that. I, I, I don't expect money from people. And he's like, that's the life I've lived. I don't, I'm surprised that you're living like me. And I was just like, dad, me, I don't, unless there's a transaction, there's a job I've done and I'm waiting on money. Me, I don't sit like this and think that someone will store my impressor with something. And I don't expect it from everyone, from anyone so you'll realize that you will never be rewarded. No one will ever care for you like that. No one will. And I, <laughs> there's a friend of mine who keeps saying, um, I need to learn how to answer my calls. And I was like, calls I can answer. It's only that I can, I can note trends. And so I usually know. There are people if they call me. Even by the way I know. Uh, someone is calling me. The other is calling me. I told my friend, I do not know of a call that I will answer, even from home, even from home, even from anyone. I do not know of a time when my phone will ring and I will answer that call and the person on the other end will not want something from me. And it's not necessarily money. Sometimes it's a favor. Sometimes it's a responsibility. Sometimes it's an errand. And I'm just like, I do not think there's, I know of anyone in my life who could be calling my phone and I would think, oh, let me answer. They're just checking up on me. No. So if you see me not answering my calls, I don't have the headspace to deal with you and whatever it is you want to ask from me, whether it's just psyching yourself up because it's going to a point where um, there are people who call me up and they're just like, you know, all of you are such good energy. So... Um, I have this nini I'm going to do tomorrow and I just want you to psych me up. It's not money. It's not a favor. But I know I'm good energy, but you assume I have this all the time and you assume you don't, you didn't even care at what point you've called me. Do you know if I'm mourning? Do you know if I'm going through something? Am I going through something at work? No. You just called me. You want good energy. So, at the end of the day, I've told a lot of people, I can't receive calls because I still to date do not know of anyone who would call me if they're not asking of anything from me. So I'm sorry, friends, family out there who's watching this episode. I am not answering my calls because I know you want something. And I keep telling you people, if I don't answer my call, can you text in that sense, I know how to prioritize whatever it is that you need. And I know for a fact, if you want something, I keep telling people, if you want something, please just contact me and tell me what you want. As someone who has gone through the um, through life just being the kind of person who does a lot, but not a lot is done for them, I do not expect you to call me. I, I've not talked to you for a while and then you call me and they just say, hey, Olive, how are you doing? It's a lie. Just get to what you want to say. Just get to what you want to. I want, I want to be mad. I'm never even mad. I, if there's people I really respect is people who holler at me and they're like, hello, how are you doing today? 
I don't even care how you're doing. Um, I want uh, 50K. Do you have it? I don't. Okay, so I'll see you later. I do. I have it. I'm sending it to you. I'll return it. Nini. Tosha, this idea of pretending that you care about how I'm doing before you get to... I don't want the pleasantries. Just get to it. So, yes... We as black sheep have gone through enough. We are the most convenient, but most mistreated. <laughs> yeah, you won't get any sort of favorite treatment or special treatment from people. But when they need things done, it is you that they will always, always come to. So learn to set your boundaries very strictly so that you don't end up feeling like you're being used. Because these days when people come to me and they're just like, you know me, I do things for people and they don't do it for me. I'm just like, at the end of the day, it's not their fault. There's always going to be users out there. And you can't always cry victim. So set your boundaries. Be stern. These people are willing to hurt you or sacrifice you or exchange you with something else that's the next convenient thing. So just be able to know that you can also choose yourself. Okay? So at the end of the day, even if you come to me and tell me, oh, people are using you. You've allowed yourself to be used. Even us out here, we are very convenient people. But can people use us? No, you have to limit your access because you know how valuable you are, you are as a person. And that value is built on trauma. But anyway, you have to learn how to live. I am sorry, it's tough. The world is not an easy place. As I have said before, we used to think that the world has good people, the world has bad people as well, and you do not need to have done anything bad to get bad treatment. So just put your boundaries, just, I don't know, guys, just be safe, be safe out there. The one thing that I am worried about um, now that I have learned a lot of things on how to deal with this particular trauma of being the black sheep is Sometimes I think to myself, have I become too unfazed? Am I am I too cold? I know I'm cold and distant a lot of times, um, but uh, am I? Because there are things sometimes that, you know, it's my sisters. My two younger sisters are the ones who call me and tell me something that has happened at home. And I'm just like, okay. And they... Sometimes they're surprised at my reaction being so calm. And even I sometimes think about it. Am I, have I gotten to a point where nothing is a surprise? Nothing takes me by surprise anymore. Nothing is sh extremely shocking. Like you just learn to live through things. I know it's a good thing, but could it be a bad thing? Could it be bad that the world could be burning and I'll just look for a sitcom and sit and sip my wine? I don't know. But at the end of the day, we don't have answers. At the end of the day, this podcast is just for me to share. And it does not necessarily mean that anything will make sense. It doesn't mean that I've found the solution. It doesn't mean that my way is the correct way of dealing with such trauma as a black sheep. I'm just here because I needed to share this experience because there's people going through the same experience out there. And... You just have to deal with it. And all the, and it doesn't end. Up until now, I still get calls to attend to other people. And the bad reputation continues. But one thing that I learned how to do is also to reclaim the bad reputation. If they said you're a prostitute, then just walk with your head high. And the next time someone asks you for sex, charge it. I don't know. Um, If they say... Oh, I remember the time when I moved out of my mom's house. There was a rumor going in Eldoret that I had gotten myself a Mubabas. A Mubabas is a sugar daddy for people who don't know. I had gotten myself a Mubabas and probably I wanted to just have, to just be, to just have sex around town and then abort children left, right and center. So that hurt me in the beginning. But these days I just say, eh, me a mother of graves, you move with your life. So it's helped a lot to reclaim the negative reputation that people choose to give you other than fighting it and it feels so hurtful. Once you reclaim it, it really does not bother you. Whatever it is you want to call me in this town of yours or whatever it is you want to believe that I am, go ahead and say it. 
And as I have said, people who genuinely interact with you know you best. So my friends and my workmates and people who are close to me know me better than people who I am related to by blood and think I am this or I am that because they were offended in a certain way. And I just don't be convenient for people. It's easier said than it is done, but you go through the process and you learn one experience at a time. On that day, you decide, I'm not giving, I'm not sending money. I'm not sending 200 bob home. I'm going to buy chicken in and eat. And I will go to bed guilty, but I will do it again next week until I learn how to not feel guilty for using the last bit of cash to not help someone who at the end of the day, doesn't even die. By the way, if you don't send that 200 home, imagine they don't die. They'll just call you again next week to ask for the 200 again. You'll find, they'll find ways. So at the end of the day, you just learn. But also, as I'm sharing my story, I do recognize that I have the privilege of a family that can provide for itself. My sisters are well-placed for themselves. They've done well for themselves. My mom and my dad also worked hard and did well for themselves during their time. So... They're not exactly desperate for things from me. So I can understand being in my comfort level because I understand there are people who are going through the same trauma as I, but at home there's nothing. So they still feel the very sole responsibility to still take care of things at home. For me, the home is a bit stable. So that's why I have the luxury of choosing myself and choosing things like not feeling guilty because... At the end of the day, it's not a matter of life or death back at home. But with that said, we close the episode on <laughs> black sheep, ba ba black sheep, and least favorite children. If any of it relates, please leave your comments in the comment section. You can text me. You can send me emails. Um, DM me, not text me. <laughs> None of you have my number. But DM me and I will get to your responses. Please watch out on my social media. I will be posting a question that we get to discuss in the next week. So until then, do have yourself a lovely, lovely time. I know my energy levels have shookered by now. And it's because this was a very heavy topic to start off season three with. But I am happy all the same. So take care of yourself and be good to people only until a certain extent. Um, and then make sure it's reciprocated. If it's not, it's good to just move on with your life. Show yourself the love that you want to be shown. Uh, learn how to heal. Even me, I'm learning right now how to be taken care of, how to let other people take care of things. I don't always have to reach for my wallet when I'm going out with people. I don't always have to check, oh, who's getting home? How? Who's? Ah, let people be grown-ups as well. You don't always have to be the one who is in charge and taking care of everyone. But until next time, bye.